get uh, one microphone and try to speak as loud as possible. My name is Eric Beer. I come from Business Training at the Bori. We were started in 1977 and we worked with cluster development in over 40 years. One of the first clusters we initiated was Elite Electronic Industry Training. This is one very early network of clusters. Then in the early 2000s we initiated GREAT for IT infrastructure, Micro Road for micro antennas, Telematics Valley for telematics, and Center Visualization, which went to be Visual Arena in that building. And now we're looking into AI, cybersecurity, AR, VR, and EdTech. And what we do, we do a mapping and see, do we have enough companies to start a new network? We don't want to start clusters ourselves. If there is a good network, we should build on that. And I think the meetup group arranged in this conference is an excellent ground for building a bigger network with meetups, cluster initiatives, cluster net networking, and conferences like this one. So this is a very good soil to build on a bigger one. And but to see how is the situation that we initiated this study done by Johan Hogsfeld at Hoal Company. This one. Thank you. Um, so today I would like to present to you a study uh, where we have taken a look at the region and what's happening in big data, machine learning and AI as a sort of inspiration. Uh, first, a few words about me. I used Google Cloud Platform uh, API to upload my profile picture I used for this conference. And um, as was said earlier this morning, you can uh, learn a lot of things. I'm a professional business executive, a business person, it's a photography. I'm a white collar worker, 69% uh, likelihood that I'm a gentleman. <laughs> yes, but the most certain thing in this picture is uh, that I'm wearing a necktie. That's a corner case. <laughs> Would a gentleman actually wear, wear a plaid shirt <laughs> to a suit? No, never. So, since it can't happen, it's like an elephant in the room or on, on the road. It's wearing plaid. Um, so about me, I've got 20 years of experience in combining tech, business and leadership. If I, um, I have a Master of Science degree in Engineering and Physics from Chalmers. A Bachelor of Science in Business Administration, so I'm interested in basically everything. Um, I am a founding partner at a small consultancy firm, uh, Ho Company. Uh, we are doing IT development, management consulting, and uh, a startup in robotics. Um, this uh, um, assignment is done as a consultant for business region Gothenburg. And when I signed up for this meetup, uh, I asked my colleagues what title I had. Um, I usually don't use titles. So I asked him and said, put evangelist. Uh, what <laughs> For me, that's someone from a very large firm uh, spreading the evan evangelium about a new technology. <laughs> but since I started this study six months ago, I um, have become more and more like an evangelist. So if we look at this uh, study, uh, I'll go through first the mission I got from Eric and the business region, uh, some definitions that everyone in this room know about, uh, the map of companies in Gothenburg and the region, uh, talk a bit about select industries, companies and actors, and uh, what possibilities I think it will give to you in this room, um, because it's this is a very homon homogeneous, but in English. <laughs> um, you, in this, uh, ah. <laughs> the next step in this. So the mission uh, was to make a map featuring West Swedish uh, actors in the area of big data, machine learning and AI. I got it six months ago. Uh, Eric provoked me. Is it possible to find 100 companies in the region working <laughs> with this type of things? Uh, no. <laughs> Not a chance, <laughs> was my initial um, feeling. 20, 40, 50 perhaps, but 
there wasn't that much going on. And uh, either it has, I was probably a bit blind, but also a lot of things is happening right now. <laughs> there are new companies almost every week, at least every month, uh, and new startups and new applications. And um, if we look back even further, uh, this is a Mark Etunist uh, cartoon. Uh, it was from 2014, was, was a bit futuristic. I think my Nest smoking alarm is going off. Google AdWords just pitched me a fire extinguisher and an offer for temporary housing. Uh, <laughs> it, it, I would say we are there today. <laughs> Who pays me the most? <laughs> on the AdWords site to know what my smoke alarm uh, does. Uh, and if I don't have a direct line to the fire department, probably a company selling fire extinguishers have the most to make. And temporary housing, that's probably a good margin on that, so they can pay a lot for the information from my fire alarm. Uh, comparing it to cars, do I, as the owner of the car, own the information that the car produces and can access it freely? or not. Uh, as a buyer of a fire alarm, <laughs> can I access that information freely? Um, so we laughed at it in 2014 and it's a reality now. Um, and it has affected most of the things in our region. Um, today it's obvious, we're talking a lot about autonomous cars, um, but I would say that almost all companies and all organizations are affected by this technology and uh, more and more every day. <coughs> so where we are today in the Gothenburg region, uh, of course the automotive industry with uh, Volvo, uh, Vionier, Sevt, Senuity, Neves, Link, uh, and a lot of other sensor companies, uh, a lot of research around it, uh, that's a big driver. Uh, we also have the Volvo trucks, for example, uh, that have easier applications, like the autonomous uh, refuse trucks. Um, we have some, um, uh, for example, if we take the ecosystem around other AI solutions, like the Amazon's Echo. Um, of course, the first thing you do when you get an Amazon Echo is you connect to Spotify, uh, but also, if you have a Telda system from Halmstad, that's not AI or machine learning, but it is integrated to the system, and suddenly an old or legacy <laughs> home automation system can have voice control. So when doing a study about what's AI, what's machine learning, what's big data in Gothenburg, is that an example of AI or not? Is that relevant or not? Um, next to that is SKF. Um, no, so, sorry, FlexLink. Uh, they are doing uh, transport li lines for uh, industries. Uh, very non-AI. But together, they are now bundling uh, collaborative robots uh, that use machine learning and image recognition. Uh, is that an example of where AI is used in Gothenburg or not? So the study has um, some... Bounding issues. Uh, this is another uh, Gothenburg company uh, that uh, can use this machine learning and image recognition to sort batteries in, uh, as a recycling, refined. Um, Griffi, as an example, uh, does. Um, uh, ah. IT forensic solutions, when you have a lot of images, a lot of uh, data around the crime, how do you best sort that? That's, that's another application. And um, uh, Integrum uh, are doing uh, uh, prothesis uh, where you can control your artificial body parts with your brain. Uh, so there are a lot of different areas where we use machine learning. But 
altogether, we have several different verticals uh, in the region. We have transport and automotive, of course, a lot today. Internet and security, where we have a strong presence. Uh, financial and ERP solutions, where I would like to see more presence. Life science around Solgrenska Science Park, where we're using a lot of machine learning and uh, um, big data analysis. And then we have the other verticals. Uh, and as an example to um, how your technology affects uh, the companies in the region, uh, let me take the example of a small translation firm. Uh, I met um, a few weeks ago, and that's a part of the evangelist. Usually when I go out as a business consultant, I speak about the current market, I speak about the organization, the marginal revenue, but suddenly uh, I have to start speaking because I start to understand the AI part of it and the machine learning part of it, uh, that the whole business is changing, the whole business model is changing. And I think many of you in the room can help people understand that their business model is changing. So if you go to a translation agency, uh, you find a project manager, maybe schooled in uh, languages, maybe schooled in economics. You find some more project managers, you have people that are trained in languages, and you have a network of translators. Uh, if they look at their market today, they see something is happening, um, they look at their competitors, they don't look that dangerous. Um, the competitors are doing some, some things on the web, but mostly they do the same as yesterday. Um, and the interesting, when you, when you apply your knowledge, you know that, okay, the danger to this translation firm is not uh, the competitors they know today. It is uh, different startups doing machine translation. Uh, it's, um, of course, the machine translation from the big companies and the giants. And they have learned that the, uh, we are still safe because the machine translation isn't good enough. No, it, is. it might not be perfect in all cases. But for example, and they also say we have special knowledge, we, we know how to translate the year-end reports for companies. That's a very special knowledge, we've done it for 100 years. Uh, so that's one of our strengths. And uh, in the Swedish regulations now, the year-end reports are becoming more and more and more standardized. So for 90% of a year-end report, uh, being a human can only introduce errors in translation, because there are only certain words you are allowed to use if you take the K2 uh, rule work. Uh, so a lot of the rules are actually making it harder for humans to work in the area and easier for the machines. <coughs> And also, but then they say that, okay, in this other type of uh, the instructions, is it, when we uh, translate the manuals, it's important that it's correct. But no, uh, you are all starting to re read machine translated uh, uh, manuals today. Uh, you start to learn and start to understand the errors. Okay, the machine translation is not perfect, but after reading 10 or 20 or 30 machine translated pages, you understand what the translation means. Um, so it's not perfect, but it's good enough. Um, and if you take the kids today, they are reading machine translated um, information about the games. At least my two girls, a 15 and 12 year old, they learn to read from computer games, they learned both Swedish and English from the iPad. And they are reading texts that are machine translated because many games must, out, must be launched in 100 markets at the same time. So now we are actually changing the language because we are schooling them with iPads and computers uh, in a machine translated language, which means that the translators doing the old fashioned, old school translation will use old Swedish, like 19th century for our kids, <laughs> or 20th century Swedish. But we are in the 21st century, and then the Swedish around computers 
would be machine translated. So the technology you are using here is not only transforming the market, not only transforming the business model, but actually changing the generation that grows. It's not that they've grown up with it, it's uh, with the technology. It has also changed uh, them in the technology. So <coughs> the message with this story is that uh, deep learning, machine learning, AI solutions goes through anything in, uh, or goes through everything in the business area and all private life uh, in more and more uh, noticeable ways. So if we look at the big data, machine learning and AI map in Gothenburg, um, I'm now, go now going to use subjective data. Uh, I've chosen uh, from the companies in the region about 100 uh, that I want to put on the picture uh, for you to get somewhere. Okay, why are these on the look? These are on the picture because they are doing self-driving cars or something in the medicine, but what are they doing? In what way are they related to um, big data, etc. So I want to give 100 examples of um, companies from the region. Um, and there always could be more and always could be less. And if we start with transport and automotive, it sounds like almost all of you <laughs> are from this vertical, or the majority of the people today. Uh, we actually have a very unique cluster in Gothenburg. It's strong on the world level uh, with both the Volvos. We, of course, have Autoliv, Senuity, uh, Vionier. It's actually not on this picture. Yes, it is. But we also have Sevt, we have Nevs, we have um, uh, Link. So we have a lot of strong drivers in automotive. I could have made this larger. Uh, and as you, as everything today has said, this is a very interesting part, and it's really driving the technology forward. We also have other uh, modes of transportation, space transportation, where RUAG uses a lot of big data and machine to uh, in their space development. West Traffic has a giant database of all the uh, traffic data for many years. Most of the buses give their position every second. There is a big data uh, calculation going on uh, at all the times. So if you are waiting for the bus here and uh, it says on the sign that it's five minutes late, uh, it could be ten minutes late where it is now, but at this time of the day and the traffic situation, etc., it should probably be able to... Uh, um, get back five of those minutes, it was late. So a lot of big data to run West Traffic and the other traffic in the public transport. Jeppesen, uh, former Carmen Systems, is also an example of big data. Uh, passenger and crew, sorry, crew planning for airlines. The gigantic global puzzle. Uh, an early example of uh, big data in the Gothenburg region. And um, not doing so much big data and AI in the um, ferry business, perhaps, but Stena Line is doing what m many other companies are doing. They are implementing AI and big data in other parts of their operation. It's not only in, uh, <coughs> uh, for, for example, it, it's not for Volvo. Of course, big data and deep learning is a important part when you design a car, but it's also in the customer support. And, some, and when you apply, uh, and when you want to sell a transport as a service, uh, when does this part break down, etc. So for these large companies, it goes through many parts of the organization. And Stena Line is driving and making a lot of us pressure on this. What, uh, one sector that actually surprised me to find uh, is the internet and security. Um, there we have uh, several very interesting uh, companies in the Gothenburg re region. Uh, recorded future in the active threat detection uh, uses um, big data uh, 
and machine learning to analyze millions and millions and millions of documents every day for possible threats. Net clean for that works against uh, child pornography. Iricity, uh, that is um, cameras and sensors. Uh, Halo and firewalls. Gemalto, uh, security for uh, transactions on the net, for example. Um, so a lot of um, companies working uh, with the security sector. And then one sector that is uh, up and coming is life science. And uh, of course, AstraZeneca is on this. Um, there's been a... Mm, uh, Solgenska Science Park has made a separate study in this area where they have gone through a lot of small startups in life science and found that, okay, the largest players, they use these technologies, they are large enough, um, and they have the large amounts of data. Interestingly enough, the medium-sized players probably started a few years ago before these technologies came. They uh, don't have the same adaption rate for the modern technologies, and the small startups, they uh, have a high adaption of uh, modern technologies in AI. Uh, and um, one important uh, part of this is the our region, Västra Götalands regionen, probably the biggest, one of the biggest employers in this area, uh, where it will have an impact on many areas. Uh, it could be expert systems for diagnosis. Um, there's research going on, uh, for example, how you could use the lang language um, uh, analysis to see if a person has Alzheimer. Um, because I have a language pattern now, which is uh, bad and unpracticed English, but still, <laughs> if I speak native Swedish, I have a language pattern uh, when I get grow older, uh, and I, if I start to have the bad fortune to get Alzheimer's, my language pattern will uh, change over time. That is also one thing to um, search for in life science. So, healthcare and AI, what applications do we have? In drug discovery, we have a lot of data. Um, so, uh, to be able to analyze and uh, draw better conclusions using better algorithms in a uh, drug discovery is one thing that we is very important. In the drug design and clinical trials, also uh, can save a lot of costs to analyze correctly. Um, for the large medical companies, they invest a lot of money in the product portfolio. Um, can we have a Gothenburg company um, that actually uses data to um, optimize how you develop your product portfolio? And use, we have ed tech solutions uh, uh, that uh, can educate the users. And in the user experience, of course, we can use expert systems and uh, trained systems to put their diagnosis uh, and for patient support and for decision support for doctors, um, which is something that, um, if I go back, I can't go back. Um, we have several companies doing in the region. So taking a full look at this, um, in the service sector, we have a lot of companies as well. Um, many of them sell a lot of services to the um, automotive sector and to the life science sector, but uh, this, this competence is uh, in demand almost anywhere. And there is competence uh, in this region. In, in a very positive way, because the universities are turning out students and, uh, with uh, the correct courses in mathematics and in machine learning. Five minutes. I'm trying to use one of them. <laughs> uh, 
and then the incubators and arenas uh, that are actually getting prizes internationally. Uh, GU Ventures, uh, Chalmers Ventures, Lindholm and Science Park, a marvelous place where we are today, and Solgrenska, uh, just as samples. Um, so together this is a thriving cluster um, with more and more companies uh, coming up. In the other verticals we have uh, advertising companies. You, you don't just spend your dollars on, on the internet anymore. You need to actually target your customers better. There are a few companies that have a large development group in uh, Gothenburg, but the sales in uh, the US uh, that you probably don't know about. Uh, and since yeah, I have four minutes left, I won't tell you anything more about this. This is about 100 logos and companies where you can start looking around and see what are these doing? Is this interesting for me? And uh, how will these companies um, actually evolve and what possibilities are there? There are startups, there are larger companies, uh, a good mix. Ah, I can't go backwards. So it's a rapid growth. Um, and as I say, the, the last conclusion, uh, all the actors here are not world leading in AI. Uh, all the companies that are using these technologies are not world leading, but use it to improve their everyday business. And that will be more and more because the technologies you are using <laughs> and working with every day are changing the lives of many people and changing the business for many companies. Um, some conferences and meeting spaces uh, just around this area and life science. Uh, and with that, and leaving that on, <laughs> I say thank you. <laughs>